Hi, how you guys doing? Back here, um, another day, another dawn. So today, man, um, it's funny how these things happen, like these topics come up. Um, it happens like so spiritually, I think. Today, I was at work um, checking out, like I, I just found myself looking at certain videos that popped up in my face um, about this this woman who who lived uh christianity and she was us she was saying why you know and all of these things now you see also on the internet that speak on um people leaving and what they find out found out and all of that and um so this led me obviously to speak on the topic of religion it's quite a deep topic um i'm actually even afraid you know, to speak about it um, because it's so controversial and it, it, it's, it's a thing of that it's been programmed in our minds that speaking against it is bad. Speaking for it is good. And if you speak for it, you got to be specific into what you're speaking for. And there'll be a certain group of people who are assigned to that group who are going to agree with you and people who don't assign to that group won't agree with you and there's always a back and forth you know with topics of religion and it's it's one of the the topics that 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 put people in a lot of arguments if you'd find like in a group of people you're speaking to certain people about religion you guys have a topic that's one of the topics that's going to have like a rowdy discussion it's going to be argumentative it's going to be you know facts up front, faiths, beliefs, everything, people going back and forth, you know. So I wanted to speak on this topic of religion in terms of uh, what I think about it, you know, um, and just basically trying to break it down. It may be a long video, I hope not, but it's something that we do deal with and I need to speak about it, you know. I, I have to speak about it. I can't be afraid to be upfront and, and speak on these these topics. It's one of the topics that I want to speak about on this channel. And I think it's also like the love um, topic might have different parts. Maybe we might have different people speaking on it as well, but I kind of want to introduce it to the channel. What is religion? Um, religion is, from my understanding, it's based on faith, belief in the higher source, the creator. And this stems from way back in ancient times where human beings always knew there was something out there, something bigger than them that they wanted to worship. Because when you look around you, in terms of nature and how things work, you kind of see a design, you see a pattern of design, you see things that work together that you can't explain, such as day and night, you know, the sun comes up, it goes down, there's the moon, we have trees, uh, we have animals, birds flying in the sky, we ourselves, how our system works, you know, our body system, I forgot what the word is, man, uh, immune system, <laughs> yes, how your immune system works, you know, reproductive systems, everything just works together and, and just the mystery of life, giving life, you know, death, all of those processes of life is um, what led our ancestors to want to find what this is, you know, what's beyond us, because it's not like we see it. We can't see it physically as to how everything works. So people have been taking time to try and understand. And that's also where science comes in where people try to understand the world around them and understand why things work the way they do. So religion is uh, groups of people who worship in a certain way, believe certain things, and what they believe is, 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 is the creator of all of this, how this design came to be, and the collective believe in the same thing, in the same system. And mostly it's based on holy scriptures, you know, uh, scrolls, things people put together, these books that you get, such as the Bible, the Quran, and um, 
I forgot what the uh, Hindu one is, but all of these religions have their scrolls that people uh, follow their lifestyle by. And they read these books and they um, follow by the laws of those books, laws that are put there, because those books are said to be the word of the creator and what the creator says humans should do and how they should live. So I'm going to mostly speak on, because I grew up from a, a Christian environment. My, my, my home, you know, is, is Christian based. So I was brought up as a Christian. I wasn't brought up as a Muslim. I wasn't brought up as a Buddhist or Hinduism or, 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 or Rasta or whatever else beliefs are out there. I was brought up as a Christian. So most of what I believe growing up was based on that, was based on Christianity. So I saw life through that lens, you know. When I was growing up in my Christian faith, um, assessing myself now, I realized that I had certain traits that I, I don't really like. That is things such as self-righteousness, pride, things we don't know we have because we believe that our uh, belief is the, the truth and there is no other truth that can counter it or, you know, there is no other truth out there but that, you know. So that is the thing that we've been taught and we go out there into the world with this persona that we know everything and that we have the truth and that, what you say is wrong. So I see religion being dangerous in that regard because we all have our differences and we all stand by our truth that we've been taught. And that's where you also get radicalism, where you have people who do radical things for the sake of their faith. And that ends up harming other human beings. And what happened with me, my story, <laughs> it's funny, man. Um, my story is... I came from, I mean, I started reading up on stuff, okay? Uh, my awareness started growing even more in terms of the world around us in general. I wanted to kind of take myself out that world for a bit and really assess everything and listen to people for once and hear people out, try to understand people, you know, like I said with the What is Consciousness video. Um, trying to understand people, trying to understand the world around us, being aware. And with what I believed, I had my conflicts as I grew older. Because then I started reading the Bible literally. And some things I didn't agree with and some things weren't connecting. You know, there was many contradictions that I started seeing. You know, such as things in the beginning with Genesis where... Uh, one of the sons went to go marry a wife when they were the only people on earth. You know, when you had Adam and Eve and you had the two sons and the Bible said that the son went to go marry. So I was like, who did he marry and where did that person come from? Um, that was just the first inception, man, when people started asking me these questions because you do sometimes sit down and think with these questions that you get from people when you go out there and try to push your faith, where you're kind of like, I can't answer this question, <laughs> you know, like, I can't, I can't answer this question, but you try to find ways to counter it and you try to find other scriptures to counter it. And I feel like that's what um, I saw was the trend is that you ask the difficult question, you ask the question that's literally written and you try to find other things to back it up. But then why is that there? Why are you trying to find that scripture? I was asking about this one. And even you finding that one, then that surely shows me that that is contradictory then. If this said this and that said that. So I had this journey, man, where I was at a park one day and I spoke to God and I was just crying, literally. You know, I was crying. I was asking God why things like hell exist, such a gruesome place, you know, and why people would be sent there, especially for not believing in a faith and not believing in this when there is so many others and 
God himself didn't speak to those people himself to say who he was. Instead, we are told by other people through scriptures and those scriptures themselves, you find also that they were written by man and also the book itself was forced upon us as Africans during slavery. Then I started asking myself, why would you force that on us? And if you were trying to enslave us, why give us something that would empower us? Because then it's said now that the Holy Scripture empowers people. It gives us knowledge of self. It, it, it raises our awareness. It gives us consciousness, you know. So why would they give that to the people they're trying to oppress? And why would it be forced? You know, we had in ancient times our own traditions, our own cultures, our own beliefs. Our ancestors had our own beliefs. And we don't even know them anymore because... We are living in this time where this thing is so prevalent now. But now when you start getting information and going backwards and seeing where this stuff came from, you start questioning a lot of things. And now you start getting into the depth of also the scriptures themselves and not reading it and, and on surface level. Because I had this habit, and I know many Christians out there have it, where you just skip over certain things that you don't agree with and you take stuff that you do. But... You don't take the whole thing because you realize that everything there doesn't contribute to your spiritual growth or your um, your accessibility as a human, if I can put it like that. So I had that conflict, man. I went back and forth with the creator, like, why, why is why is a place like this that exists? Why, what happens if? Um, you are young, you're a child, and you never had the chance to accept the cross. Do you then go to hell? And then you had these Christians that try to tell me that um, no kids are uh, they're innocent or they haven't. They're not at a certain age where they can make that decision. But there's no way in the scripture that says that. It just literally says if you haven't, then this is your portion, and every man and every knee must bow. So that's every need, even the child. And then you get um, the Old Testament where people were being slaughtered, where God sent um, the Israelites to conquer cities and kill the women and children and everything that's in there. So you get all these Old Testament stuff that were gruesome. And then in the New Testament, it's a different vibe. You know, there's preaching love and, 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 and forgiveness and peace. And then people say that's part of the whole revelation. But then in the same breath, there's a whole thing of, um, there's a whole thing of, well, God doesn't change. He stays the same. He is, he was, and forever will be. And that's something my pastor used to always say, you know. So if I take it that, just face value, like, oh, so he never changes then he's the same God in the Old Testament as the New Testament, then there is no difference. Then why is there a difference, you know? You know so then you get these consequences for questioning this stuff, and you get consequences also in your afterlife if you don't accept this truth, that billions of people in the world and not everybody's going to make it. So that whole separation, it just felt like a separation already, and I felt separated from people because there's always also that thing of they are the world you know and you guys are the saved and already that's like a, a separation I, I walk the earth discriminating against people i hear people swear i hear i see people smoke and, and do all this stuff and i judge them and i'm like oh I, i'm glad i'm not those people you know those people are doomed and i'm saved and you try to help everybody and not everybody needs your help and you know, so you're constantly living a life of paranoia as well. You're constantly living in fear. I lived in a lot of fear most of the time, more than love. So now I had to ask myself, am I believing in this out of love and out of um, literal faith? Or am I living it out of fear? Am I doing this out of fear? Because well, how this thing was brought to me is that if I don't do this, then this is my portion. I'm going to go to hell forever, for eternity. I'm going to burn in suffering and I'm going to be uh, tortured and uh, yeah. So when I started taking these things literally in my mind, it really messed me up. I couldn't wrap my head around it. 
and I really it really stopped me from living in love because I just have fear. Every time I heard people, they go out there because you're not going out there preaching the gospel. When Jesus said, go and preach the gospel, it made you feel bad. And, you know, your life just always had some fear in you. There was a like fear. And that fear itself just reminded me of the slavery. And I started understanding why this thing was imposed on us as Africans to try and keep us, you know, controlled or whatever. So this is not for me to get political and, you know, speak on the stuff and say, oh, don't do this, don't do that. I'm just speaking on my own personal experience because I'm trying to be real with y'all with everything on this channel. Um, this is just something that I experienced. I'm not saying that what I'm saying is absolute truth, but I'm just saying these are the questions that I had to ask myself and ask the creator also. And I, I, I do ask, I asked for the creator to, you know, reveal the the real truth you know um or i should accept if that's not going to happen and i should just be able to live life and, and and try seek and 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 understand and gain knowledge and learn more and learn more and not live in a box of ignorance because i kind of disregarded everything else that wasn't scriptural i kind of disregarded all other possibilities in the world because I believed what I believed and I, I, I was like, I'm not gonna change how I think about it. And that's just, goes might go the same for everyone else and other beliefs. So I asked myself like, okay, so what about those people in those beliefs then do, are they going to, to hell because they're not believing in this? I started just going deeper and deeper because like, I care for these people actually like, yo, I love this brother. I have friends and they don't believe in this. So now it's like, I feel bad for them the whole time. I have pity and it just wasn't giving me time to really just know the person where they come from and what they believe. I always had this image that I know, I know better. So that's what for me, the religion did for me. So judge for yourself if it's, if it's good or not, but I, I can't say it it did good for me in that regard. And I don't want to be that guy who says, no, don't do this, don't do that. I'm just trying to say, seek truth as much as possible. Um, that's the most important thing, man, because this thing left me in a roller coaster and I kind of am still in, in a roller coaster ride, you know, because now I'm just questioning a lot of things and that's leaving me sad sometimes confused but also liberated also you know i also do feel a little more liberated i feel less fear i feel more alive because i'm now starting to understand life more and myself and i'm just i'm going with the flow and 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 um really trying to open up my mind to different things you know um, and not closing off everything that comes my way. So, yeah, man, I also sat down with uh, my uh, Sal leader at some point, and I was speaking to him about all these things, and everything that he was replying with, you know, was referring to scripture. And I'm like, okay, put scripture aside. Let's just talk. You know, let's talk human being to human being what you feel. You know what I'm saying? Because then if you really think about it, if human beings were supposed to live by the scripture, then how is it that there were humans before the scripture was even written? And there were people who were literally living, and those people who happened to have written the scriptures never had scriptures to refer to. They never went around quoting scripture because they didn't have any. They wrote scriptures. And the later generations are the ones that are now referring to that with every single decision in their life when those people back then happen to have heard from the source themselves. So how is it that that's not possible today where we can hear from the source ourselves? Why do we always need to read a book for us to be able to live life? Why can't we like those people live life first? Why can't we live life and then write our journey, write our, our story? Because what you also see in the Bible, for what I saw, is that those are different people's stories. And 
there was supposed to be a form of reference but now it's like no this is the law don't 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 do this do that you know everything in our lives we have to refer and we're not taking time to just live and to understand what it is that's inside of us and what's speaking to us on our day to day and gaining our inspiration and getting our internal uh guidance and and gauge because man just also that whole thing while I was also still um very dedicated i never read much of the scripture because it was such a chore you know and i felt bad for it i felt bad that it's such a, sh- a chore to read the bible i have to read it every day and my church always tells me it must be your daily bread you must read it every day but i never took time to ask myself why those people who wrote it never had it as their daily bread you know um many generations lived before the scripture before this belief same with other religions as well you know before their belief before their the, the those scriptures there were people living so you get all these historical facts of the ancient africans and what they believed and the egyptians and how the bible was uh, plagiarized from those beliefs man i don't know like sometimes i've heard that people say yeah be careful some people just put out information that's not true cool man you know like but just ask yourself also what if it is true you know what if it is true are you going to deny for the sake of your comfort because you feel like i've lived with this so long i can't live without it i'd rather not ask questions i'll just follow by it and that is i feel how slavery survived so long is because we got to a point where we were dependent on it first it was enforced there was a generation where it was enforced so that the generations after that can depend on it and feel like they can't have a life outside of that it's just like the system like how all of this is built like how we have to have jobs every day get money this and that and that we become we become dependent on that we can't even rise as a group against something that's oppressing us because as people we do feel oppressed but we can't even rise up above it and try um revolt against it because it is uh it's 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 our dependence we've depended on it we can't have life without it so that is just things man where one's got to ask themselves at some point man do i believe in a god though i do I do still believe in in a creator and I've never seen the creator personally so I can't even be sure to say this is what the creator is or looks like or what their name is or if it's a he or she or if there if there is a gender or whatever I can't understand things of the spirit I can't understand the spiritual side of things I've never been there I can only understand what I know now in my life right now what's been given to me and what's been given to me at the moment are these two eyes the smile these hands and this thing we spoke about with that within us this navigation you know these things that we 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 try to unravel and discover within us I feel like there's layers within our souls but we don't even take time to look into that because we are so distracted by the world and what's everything that's going on including things of religion we have to some people literally go back and forth in ch- churches like weekly i mean different days of the week no one gets time to literally just sit down and just try to figure it all out you know if this thing is really true at some point you will come back trust in that you know but you will come back with more wisdom you'll come back with more um revelations or whatever but don't be afraid to take the step you know if you feel comfortable in it i'm not saying in any regard anybody should leave or not but really try to take time to think about it man religion is there's different types there's many different types of them you know there's many different ones so what is what says that yours is true and when i was watching these videos today man this guy who was trying to preach to these people i just felt like 
this person wasn't even taking time to listen to these people who also had their beliefs because he felt like he was so right in what he was saying and what he was doing to a point where he didn't even know his own faults at that time because he was being self-righteous according to his own scripture. And he was also being... Um, he was belittling people in a way, man. He was seeing himself on a more superior level than the people was talking to. And you could see that in the conversation exchange. You could feel that. Like, you could see it. Like, this person feels like he has it all figured out. All these questions they ask, he always has something to say to that. Um, but those people have questions and they have something to say to what he has to say, but he won't hear it because to him, his truth is, is the truth. So... It just does bring a certain type of arrogance and I respect the brothers a lot, man. I respect everybody. I love everybody. And if I come to these discussions, man, let's let's talk about it freely. Let's not try be on some, yo, you're doing wrong. This is it. Back and forth. Let's talk as people. Let's talk as people, man. Let's unravel this stuff. Let's learn from each other. I'm still also on a spiritual journey right now. Um... I'm really trying to just liberate my mind from all of this because this just didn't make sense to me, man. If this this belief I had was so... Um, the world was so against it, as it says, then why is it one of the most popular religions on earth? The most vast, the most um, financially backed, the biggest churches, biggest followings, it's all over, everywhere, man. So... If the world was really against it, why allow something like that to be so prevalent and be in the forefront? Because as you know, man, the system does kill truth. If people speak out on truth and stuff. So, yeah, man, as you can hear, even when I'm speaking about this, man, it's, it's, very, it's very touchy because for me, it's so close to home. It hurts. It hurts a lot, man. Because it's like... Yo, if this thing is really what used to enslave us, then they did a really good job. Because there's so many of us deep in it, and we can't even get ourselves out of it. It's hard for us to even think without it. And it really gets to me, you know, thinking about it like that. Because I can't, it's hard for me to believe that the creator who loves you and gave birth to you, put you on this earth, loves you more than your parents, would send you to a place like that when you didn't even have all the information from this parent. They, the parent gave other people to give to you. It, was in that, it is it's just too, it's too uh, frivolous or too... It's not strong enough to get people to believe. It's like just a belief. It's on faith. And that consequence is so drastic on something that's on faith. So yeah, it's just, it's deep, man. Like, I don't know what to say about it. Um, literally lost for words. But do your research, guys. That's all I got to say. Do your research, please. Um, I think we are coming to a time right now in our generation where the African nation is really starting to wake up to these things. And it's, it's real, man. Like, if you go all over YouTube also, you see all of these people. So, yeah, man. As you can hear, even when I'm speaking about this, man, it's, it's, very, it's very touchy because for me, it's so close to home. It hurts. It hurts a lot, man. Because it's like, yo, if this thing is really what used to enslave us, then they did a really good job. Because there's so many of us deep in it, and we can't even get ourselves out of it. It's hard for us to even think without it. And it really gets to me, you know, thinking about it like that. Because I can't... It's hard for me to believe that the creator who loves you and gave birth to you, put you on this earth, loves you more than your parents, would send you to a place like that when you didn't even have all the information 
from this parent. They, the parent gave other people to give to you. It was in that, it is, it's just too, it's too uh, frivolous or too, it's not strong enough to get people to believe. It's like just a belief, it's on faith. And that consequence is so drastic on something that's on faith. So yeah, it's just, it's deep, man. Like, I don't know what to say about it. Um, literally lost for words. But do your research, guys. That's all I gotta say. Do your research, please. Um, I think we are coming to a time right now in our generation where the African nation is really starting to wake up to these things. And it's it's real, man. Like, if you go all over YouTube also, you Stick up, stick up, chisa, 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 chisa,